Okay, guys. Welcome to another episode of Coding Freaks Webcasts. Um, today, I want to talk about a thing I talked like um, the first time, like five years ago in 2013. I talked about PHP for Visual Studio developers. And I just thought about what happened there um, because I didn't look to, into this issue for five years. So I went to the DevSense website. The DevSense guys are the ones who um, make the product for Visual Studio. As you can see here, it's still available. But there's something new. There's a version for Visual Studio Code now. And this makes pretty um, sense to me because a lot of web developers prefer Visual Studio Code over Visual Studio, which is too heavy for them or whatever reason, I, I get it. And now it's pretty consequent from DevSense to invest in Visual Studio Code. So um, as usual, it is not free. Visual Studio Code version is not free too. Let me go to the individual's pricing layer. And as you can see here, it comes with a price of 59 bucks a year for the first year and then 49 for the renewal for each developer. Um, so that said, um, let's just take a look uh, all together into the Visual Studio Code extension. Before we start, I have to state out that there are already extensions for PHP in the marketplace, which are free. Like, for instance, PHP Debug, which hooks in Xdebug. I will come to this uh, later on. Or PHP IntelliSense, which brings more IntelliSense um, into all this thing. Um, and uh, PHP Tools from VS Code is kind of bringing all this stuff together into one product. And um, uh, you have a company behind it with all the advantages this comes, uh, this brings. And uh, it comes with the price of a little bit of money so um okay cool uh let's go uh, now and take a look in what's what's in there so let me start off with uh, a new file which i store as a test php and uh, i have already one and then i go in and uh, make some php code let me zoom a little bit okay so first thing you get is php let's go to php info P you get this IntelliSense or code completion from Visual Studio already, if you uh, Visual Studio code. If you just store a file as a PHP file and you type a PHP command, you get just code completion and stuff like that. But what uh, PHP Tools gives you is a more uh, or a deeper um, sort of information based on the PHP documentation. So you get a lot more information about what the variables are, what you can pass in and stuff like that. That's pretty useful for guys like me because I'm not working in PHP all day and I don't have it all in mind. So I don't know how a string replace, what was the first parameter and all. I always, you know, mix up things here and it's pretty useful to me to have this deep uh, documentation just in place. Another thing which uh, Visual Studio code extension from P from DevFrames gives you is are some features which we all know and love or most of us know and love from Visual Studio. For instance, if you just right click a PHP file, you get all the options here in terms of context menus. And the first thing is rename symbols, which is the same default shortcut like in Visual Studio. So rename symbols is what it um, says. It's just renaming a variable name, for instance, to another. Uh, I have to state out that you have to be careful about this because if you do the global uh, research, it will work in all files, which means be careful just um, uh, when you rename symbols and think about what you do. Um, the next thing, I will show you this on a sample folder, which I prepared. I just downloaded a WordPress and um, this WordPress now is just a plain, simple WordPress zip file. I extracted it. And when we go to the index PHP here, uh, you can see, well, okay, that's uh, WordPress. And as it is with projects and um, it is with projects which are not programmed by us, um, another thing and even, even more important is that you can go here right click and have some options in terms of navigation inside of the code, which are uh, pretty common for Visual Studio guys, but not so common for PHP uh, bare metal guys. Um, for instance, let's just take a look at peak references, which is the in-place options for find all references. Let's just use peak references here. 
it brings you the peak window uh, in place and shows you all the references of the VP dashboard setup method. Um, and uh, you can see where it is, where it is, it is used. And you can jump around here and just take a look. And it's a huge thing in terms of productivity. Um, okay. A similar option is peak definition or go to definition. Let's take go to definition or F12 as a shortcut. Just at 12 it and he will open up the dashboard PHP and bring you to the function um, definition where it is. And now you can easily navigate uh, throughout the code. Oh, that was my old test PHP. So that's pretty useful. Another thing I like about PHP tools is, uh, let me close the folder and open my uh, desktop file. Another thing which is I find pretty useful is, uh, let's say if e greater 10, then I don't know. Save this guy and then hit the format document option. Uh, do it once again. I don't know why. Second time it works better. <laughs> so the format document option um, is um, uh, using a, a format which you can set up in the settings. Let me go into the PHP settings. Uh, by the way, if you're wondering why you can't read what I'm typing, it's because I use a zoom uh, extension here. Let me zoom back if it gets better I don't know yeah now it's uh, normal again it's just for me to be able to zoom in the editor don't wonder what's going on here there are 14 settings coming from DevSense for PHP and the one I mentioned was this one the code style standard you have the option between PHP tools and PSR2 I'm not sure about the point where you can set this up or customize this Mm, I tried to find out something here, but I couldn't. Mm, I don't know uh, if it's possible, or but, but I guess it will be possible. Maybe it's time to point out another thing before we go more into detail here. If you look in the extensions, I have to state out that the this extension is preview currently. It's pretty stable. Um, I just worked for a few hours with it and tested things out. It's pretty stable. Um, but you know you have to keep in mind that there's more to come here and as i know the guys from devsense there will uh, be a lot of stuff uh, coming and you see it's pretty popular already um, the, uh, in terms of downloads at least okay back to the options um let's go to the settings and filter again by php what's what else there uh, I will come to this option later on. You have some possibilities in, you know, configuring how this thing um, uh, works with, you know, problem detection, which is like linting and stuff like that, and suggestions. You can switch this on and off, and you have a lot of option uh, here, and you have some options when it comes to unit testing, which I show later on. So there are 14 options currently, and I think it will be growing over time. Here are the options it understands. Okay, cool. Um, in order to show you the next thing on my list, um, uh, I have to, you know, tell you a little bit, uh, a little bit more about my journey uh, when I um, try to figure out what PHP tools brings. So I just created a sample folder here, and it's. Um, let me just show you. It's kind of showing some stuff, but. Let me start off with this index PHP. So the first thing I wanted to achieve was to uh, debug all the stuff here from uh, Visual Studio Code, just hitting it f F5 and bring it to place. So let me tell me you about this journey. And maybe some of you guys say, well, that's pretty obvious what you tell us here. But I had some struggles um, and it came from the point, uh, from the uh, thing that for Visual Studio guys, it is pretty unusual that you have to struggle with all this stuff because DevSense ha um, providing us as a Visual Studio consumer with some convenience things like uh, auto setup of PHP and debugging. So when you hit a five the first time in Visual Studio, you get all this stuff pre-configured if you want to. 
and uh, even uh, I think PHP and Xdebug is downloaded uh, automatically and all this stuff is missing here. So that's why I just want to point out what I did. So on my machine, I just downloaded PHP from the official website in the 64-bit version and extracted it into this folder. So C program files, PHP, and there's a PHP exe. The next thing, step two, was to go into the settings here in Visual Studio Code and tell him where this PHP exe is laying. And I did it here. As you can see, it points to the C program files, PHP, PHP exe, so that the PHP tools extension knows where my PHP exe is laying. And I didn't download it into my IS Express or whatever. I just downloaded it bare to this uh, location. But that doesn't bring you debugging. So um, you, you can then start the project by hitting F5. In order to do this, like every time in Visual Studio, you have to bring in a launch JSON um, into your project. So the launch JSON for, or a valid launch JSON for PHP, I can't zoom, I don't know why, but anyway. Uh, even I have the extension which breaks everything I can't zoom here um, so let me just um, no let me just first of all show you what it does so it has a configuration like it is usual for Visual Studio Code and it has some names and now it says okay it's uh, from type PHP and it has uh, to send the launch request to the PHP exe and then it has some runtime arguments um, and it says, well, which port to use for um, the debugging experience, which is uh, every time 9000. And this port has to uh, correspond to the port, which I will show you later on in the xdebug configuration. But if you just have this launch uh, JSON, you are already able to go to the debug um, section here select this launch building web server and hit F5 or play. So what you get now is you have the PHP development server because that's what I told, told him with PHP launch uh, here. This is what he uh, executed. And then you have this development server coming into place and under this URL, you now have, here it is, a working uh, file. Let me go to my uh, file so that you can see it and it's just including a head PHP and just outputting a variable. So that's cool. But it's not debugging, it's just running it. It's pretty cool, but you know, now uh, debugging was the thing I struggled with. Let me stop this. So debugging in PHP, as you might know, is all about xdebug. So I knew I had to somehow to configure xdebug by my own. Uh, problem was, that here's a lot of here uh, is a list of you know DLLs I could download which should match to my system and I couldn't figure out for pretty embarrassing long time which one to use. So my uh, way to approach this problem was, I have to admit, after a few minutes, <laughs> to launch this um, project uh, using the info.php php file which is just a php info when i did this let me hit f5 it's running and let me go to slash info.php i recognize that i had to concentrate on the compiler and the architecture the compiler in my case is msvc 15 um, which is the visual c++ 2015 compiler 17 compilers and the x64 platform. So that gave me the hint that I had to download a matching version of the 64-bit thing. And uh, I decided then to download in the first place this file here, the VC15, which uh, was not the correct one because I needed to uh, download the TS version. I think it was a TS version I downloaded in the end because I had something configured which was, I don't know, uh, like symbols. Uh, I just have the symbols version here and it has to just match. The PHP exe and the xdebug version exe have to match and I couldn't figure out what, it, what the correct version was. So after I had this, um, I finally 
uh, could bring in this guy to work when I download all this stuff to make this happen. Oh, let me just f first off set, I have to go to the PHP any. Let me round this up, but this is something you can see in the documentation of uh, Xdebug. I have to let the send extension uh, variable point to my Xdebug DL. I have to bring in the Xdebug stuff here, uh, which I just copy and paste from the Xdebug website, which is 9000 for the default port for debugging. And this 9000 matches the 9000 port here. You see, this is a matching point. So now this configuration knows where the debugger should attach. Okay, cool. Um, when I had this in place, I now could go to my index PHP, hit a breakpoint and hit F5. Now it's running. And now when I go to the index PHP, let me just move it a little bit to the side and hit enter. You see that I uh, hit the breakpoint. So to wrap it up, to come into place, Download PHP, um, download the correct xdebug DLL and put it into the ext folder here. ext folder and put it here. I named it xdebug, renamed it to xdebug DLL. Then go to the ini and edit the ini file. Uh, go to the settings here in Visual Studio Code and let it point to the correct PHP exe. And add the launch setting and then you're good to go. <laughs> Simple as that. Um, I think there will be an automatic way in the future coming from uh, DevSense uh, for this stuff because they have this stuff for Visual Studio already. Let, let's uh, see what happens there, but uh, this is kind of annoying. Not because of DevSense, but because of PHP for Windows, I guess, whatever. So when this runs and we are in the index PHP here with the breakpoint, in the debugging session, we get this window, which uh, comes from Visual Studio Code, and you have the options for one, when breakpoints should be hit, the call stack on the current position, watches if you have one, and you can add watches here, add an expression, and you have uh, the insights to the variables, and you see here my uh, user-defined constant, which is defined in the head PHP, which I can see by peak um, definition. Here you can see it. It's val1 and this matches the value currently and uh, this is kind of a cool debug experience for a PHP developer. And now I can go on and he just outputs the correct thing. Cool, so that is debugging and the good news is debugging is supported. If you have uh, control over your machine and you are better than me and it's just term, uh, kind of five minute work and that's it. Okay, next thing was unit testing. Because unit testing is on the list of features of DevSense, so I tried to make this guy happen. So in order to, to make it work, I had to configure it on my local machine. So unit testing is all about PHP unit. Let me show you this here. PHP unit has a documentation on their website uh, how to install PHP unit on a Windows machine, which is Again, kind of annoying to me. But to wrap things up, you just download uh, this FAR file here. And I just replaced in the URL the 6.5 with the 7.1 version. And then you get a FAR file. And I copied this file into a PHP unit folder here. When I had this in place, I just ensured in the next step to go to my properties of my computer to go to the advanced system settings environment variables and to edit the path variable and add the both paths for the PHP and for the PHP unit on my machine to the paths variable. After I had this in place, I could follow the instruction here and inside of the folder where the far file lays, I could execute the script echo blah 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 into CMD and when you execute this in the correct place, it generates this file. This file is just, you know, a line of code um, uh, called PHP unit, which is the name of PHP unit as it is used to all developers and calling something inside of the far file 
um, and you know passing in the parameters and whatever. That's what it does. And it does it using PHP. It calls PHP and executes it. So that's why I had to do the environment variable setup in the first place. If everything is set up correctly, you can test it by going to Visual Studio Code, going to the console, and I hate this bug, but anyway, and just go and enter PHP unit dash dash version, enter it, and you should get this output. Okay, cool. That's it. Now go ahead and write a unit test. So unit test, I just decided to do it that way. Just entered, uh, it added a class and it, it just copied, to be honest, from PHP unit from the sample. It's an email class doing some stuff with emails. And then I have an email.test.php, which has three unit tests, one, two, three, on this class. Uh, in order to um, make it accessible as a unit test, um, you ha I had to use Composer uh, and to as a package manager and install PHP unit into my project, which brings in this vendor folder. It comes from Composer and there's PHP units. So th in order to make this use uh, method do something, it has to pull uh, the test case class from somewhere. So that's why you have to have Composer, like you have Node uh, NPM or .NET uh, NuGet or whatever. So when you have this in place, you can just execute PHP unit in the folder and it will detect all the unit tests, execute them and give you the result. So that's PHP unit uh, in the terminal. But that's not what I wanted to achieve. I wanted to have an experience with unit testing inside of Visual Studio and DevSense has something prepared here for us. And that is this tiny button. It is the test explorer coming from DevSense. And if everything is in place, it works like a charm. Let me show you the result first. You have a detection of unit tests and you can run them directly here and you get the result here and you can even debug them or jump to the code uh, position. Let me do a breakpoint here and then you can hit debug. And because X debug is uh, correctly set up, you get debug experience for unit tests too. Pretty cool, but not so easy to achieve. When you followed me uh, to this point, now you have to know some things uh, in order to get this uh, stuff happen. So let me point out this file. Here you have a file which is called PHP X unit XML. Before we take a look at this, let us just rename it to PHP unit dot XM something. Go back to our um, test explorer and refresh. So as you can see here at the bottom, if you don't have um, a valid file, which is named PHP unit dot XML in the root folder, you can ask uh, PHP tools to create one. So I did, I do this, this is PHP tools. And now you can see he added a new PHP unit.xml. And this is uh, the thing, oh, I can zoom again, cool. And what he does here, let me just uh, do it this way. He has the simplest possible version of PHP unit configuration in place. And that's all you need uh, in order to uh, have the test, test explorer to work. Um, the one I had is a little bit more sophisticated. It tells him, for instance, to have a bootstrap file, which means if I go to the test, here's my bootstrap file, and it tells him to, you know, just load everything before, uh, which is in the bootstrap file, to perform this before it performs unit tests and stuff like that. Um, it's not, you know, that important because this is documented at the PHP unit uh, file. So now everything is in place and um, uh, I just wanted to state out that there is some support from PHP tools for uh, this XML generation and all it needs is this file uh, in place. And then the test explorer is working and now you can go ahead and you know perform unit tests and whatever. The output for the test, if you want to have more details, let me clean this, is in the output under the filter PHP unit, which comes automatically into place if you have everything installed. 
and then you can run all the unit tests and you get the output from PHP unit here and you can watch it here. Okay, cool. Now we have PHP unit, we have unit tests, we have a visual unit test support here. Um, we have uh, uh, sophistic code completion. We have a lot of cool features from PHP tools here into place. Last thing I can show you is um, the uh, problem uh, matcher here. Let me just get rid of the filter. So you can see here, he's inspecting the code. It's static code analysis coming from PHP tools and uh, using, of course, PHP technologies. Uh, but it's, um, you know, it's a cool way to just take a look and see, well, okay, um, obviously mm, it makes no sense to take a look at anything in the vendor folder, which was clear. So that's why I added this filter, like uh, ignore everything in the vendor folder and below of it. And now the only warning we get is that this thing to string has to return a string, which is a warning because he does not know that this is a string. Uh, or he uh, cannot ensure that this is a string, which is pretty cool too and helps you to write more robust code. So, how do I wrap this up? Um, first of all, I'm pretty sure that uh, the PHP tools is nothing for guys who are just, you know, casually uh, writing some PHP stuff or scripting something together or whatever. Um, they will be happy uh, with stuff like, you know, the, from the extension, like in the PHP debug or PHP IntelliSense that it, it, if, if they need it. Mm. What I like about this approach that it is this uh, productivity thing for professional developers. It has to grow a little bit. It has uh, not so much features like the Visual Studio version, but I'm pretty sure it will come. And um, I will definitely use it because I uh, occasionally have to debug or inspect PHP co uh, code uh, in my daily work. And I need something which is supported by a company and that's what DevSense gives me. Plus, I know from experience that DevSense is pretty uh, fast in terms of response to uh, issues and um, uh, it's pretty agile in, in terms of the product and you get a good response and direct contact to the developers. And that all together brings me to the conclusion that I would recommend this to colleagues of mine and I already did it by the way, um, because a lot of guys like Visual Studio Code, even guys which never heard of Visual Studio and are using this, um, it's you know platform independent so you can use it on a Mac and all this together um, makes me think that PHP tools for Visual Studio Code is something you should definitely have on your toolbox as a PHP developer. Thanks for watching and see you later. Bye.